This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the XP Pen Artist 24 Pro. It's a 24 inch pen display or pen monitor. What does that mean? For those of you who are totally new to these things, it means you can draw right on the display with a pen and it requires a computer to drive it, which is what we have right here. Now, this is not a normal computer. I just used it because it happens to be very powerful, so any performance issues wouldn't be down to it. It has an Intel 11th generation Core i9 and RTX 3060 GPU on there, which is kind of overkill for a lot of illustration purposes, but again, that's the point. Anyway, what, it's really exciting how much they've improved. You hope that companies make better and better products over time, but leaps and bounds. I mean, I've been reviewing these for several years from XP Pen and from Huey On, which are two of the major, more affordable alternatives to Wacom Cintiq products, right? And it used to be the pen was never really that competitive with Cintiq or Cintiq Pro products in terms of silkiness of line quality and ease of use for the driver and all that sort of thing and display quality wasn't as good and that's starting to change we're gonna look at it now so aha you're saying so what got better about this thing well first off it has 2k resolution so 2560 by 1440 instead of the usual 1080p and to be honest with the 22 to 24 inch products that you could see the pixels really and when you're doing artwork and you're drawing at 1080p sure you think it looks okay and then you put it on a higher resolution display somewhere or print it out and you're like oh that didn't look as good as I thought so more resolution is better obviously that's not there with the Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 inch which has 4k resolution but that one costs about two two and a half times as much money so huzzah this one is $899.99, so call it $900. So that puts it in the realm of I'm getting pretty serious about buying one of these, but I'm not going to a $2,000 to $2,500 level of a Cintiq Pro. You also have USB-C on board for a single cable connection, which is pretty nice. Just in case your computer doesn't have USB-C, it also comes with an HDMI cable and USB-C to USB-A adapter. So you can go old school for the connection, but that's a nice thing. And comparing that to Wacom Cintiq 22, which is their more budget-oriented 22-inch pen display, that one doesn't have USB-C, so, and that one's only 1080p, and that one costs $1,200, so that's why I'm saying this is starting to look pretty good, but it could all fall apart if the display quality stinks or the pen's not so good. Happily, the pen quality is good, the display quality is good. In terms of the metrics of the display, just gauging this as a monitor in terms of color and brightness and all that sort of thing, it does pretty well. You've got 90% of P3 coverage on here. You have a little over 300 nits of brightness, and typically pen monitors are not that bright, so that's pretty nice. Uh, one caveat here is that this does not have a laminated display, or bonded display, it's the other way it's described, uh, which tends to be an expensive thing to do, and you, of course we'll get that on the Cintiq Pro, not on the budget, so-called budget Cintiq. And that means there's a little bit of parallax with the pen. It's noticeable. You'll see that pen tip offset. That it's not miscalibration of the pen, but just that, well, the the glass above the touch layer. There's a space. So, and uh, this is matte, which is great, and it has a tooth to it, so it's good. Your pen doesn't skate everywhere, you know, but it's not um, permanent edge glass. Again, that's a more pricey kind of thing to do. It is a well-applied, some kind of surface overlay on this. Now, I can't see the edges and peel it off like it used to be with some of the older ones, but that is still what it is. It comes with a battery-free pen, the usual 8,192 pressure levels, and the usual cigar case kind of holder or tampon holder, depending on how you want to look at that, which is nice, and then it doubles as a stand, the bottom half of it, and it holds eight extra nibs. So the eight nibs are identical. They're there for when you wear one out, though these typically are pretty long-lasting. Um, so that's going to be another difference from the Wacom Cintiq or the Cintiq Pro, both of those, which can use a variety of pens. There's the Wacom 3D pen, there's the Slim pen, there's the Legacy, you can still use them, Airbrush pen, and they have different nibs available. Like, I'm really fond of Wacom's felt nibs, so no felt nibs here. The good news is that this nib feels good on the screen, and there's no squeakiness. Sometimes we've seen this with some of these more affordable pen displays where every time you draw, it goes, hee -hee 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 -hee. and it's not happening here. So the pen looks pretty much like their older generations. It has a soft touch finish on it. It has two side buttons. It does not have an eraser on the end, and you can program the side buttons. And they are too easy to press accidentally. So like, I usually assign undo to one of them and I've decided not 
not a good idea because I was accidentally undoing stuff all the time that I was doing. Other than that, uh, it works fine. And you can choose any command that you want. Like I assigned one of the keys to be the Alt key for sampling in Photoshop when drawing. You, you can do all that. Now once in a while I noticed I would make a change to a button assignment here and it wouldn't actually happen in a particular application. This is system-wide. It's not application specific like it is with Wacom, uh, which is kind of weird. The drivers are pretty mature. This has been out more than six months now, but you know, it is what it is. Speaking of drivers, drivers are available for Windows, for Mac OS, including Big Sur and Linux even. I did most of my testing on Windows this time, mostly because Big Sur is still kind of a headache with pen displays and pen display drivers and permissions around that and all that sort of thing. So you also have, well, what Wacom calls is express keys and then call two on the sides here. And these are programmable left and right, so it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or you're right-handed, and they're pretty convenient. And you've got the two jog wheels here, which are really well-tuned. Often jog wheels are lurchy, it makes too big a change, too small a change. I assign one of them to changing my brush size, I do the other one for zoom. Alternatively, you can set one of them to rotate the canvas, because this is not a touchscreen. Uh, those work great. The buttons on the side are kind of too easy to press, much like the pen. So that means, particularly as me being a left-handed person, my hand is leaning against this bezel here and I'm using the tools that are typically mounted along the left in a program like Photoshop, and I was touching them by accident all the time. So I kind of prefer the walking way with the express key remote that you hold in your hand to avoid that problem, but that's personal preference. You know what you like. Additional connectivity on this includes two USB-A ports, basically has a USB hub built in, so you can use that to connect a mouse or a keyboard or charge your phone, which is kind of nice. You don't see that all the time, especially on the budget models. The stand on this is heavy duty and it's adjustable and it's removable too, so you can put on a VESA or VESA mount, however you want to pronounce that. If you want to put it on an ergotronic arm or whatever, that sort of thing. So sturdy and very adjustable, a lot of lots of increments and pretty easy to use. That's nice because often Often you don't get stands with some of the more expensive brands too. Hmm. Also, you can set it to be almost upright, which gets to be, you have to be careful, a little bit tipsy there, but uh, for some people this would be their main monitor if they're attaching it to a laptop or something like that. So you might want it more upright at times when you're just using it as a monitor instead of a pen display. But let's talk about the line quality and the drawing experience. That's what really is the most important thing here, isn't it? And that has improved leaps and bounds. It's almost up there with Wacom Cintiq at this point, and that's a great achievement because Wacom Cintiq and the Apple Pencil are still the best out there. Pressure levels on this are pretty good. You can adjust the pressure curves on it to suit yourself. I have a very light touch, for example, and it works for me. You've got tilt, 60 degrees of tilt, which works pretty well, except in Krita. Now, I tested this with Photoshop with Corel Painter 2022 with Clip Studio Paint, and it worked great in all those, but with Krita, tilt, not so much. I couldn't get that working, so... Crit is your thing, keep that in mind. But other than that, those features actually work on it quite well. There's no pen rotation support. So sometimes I think if you're trying to rotate the pen to do tilt and you're also curving around, so you're trying to do something like a fan, um, it might not work. It has like a little skipping or blank spots. The other caveat I noticed is sometimes with sketching, every once in a while, it just would ignore a stroke. Just would, in a variety of programs. I don't know why that is, but it doesn't happen that often. Maybe once in every 50 strokes, something like that. In terms of the line quality, it's pretty silky, it's pretty smooth. There's a little bit of jitter. I mean, the slow diagonal line test, everything is going to show a little bit of jitter. It certainly is much better than a lot of tablet PC kind of screens that are on the market these days, but I, my lines were not as perfectly curved and smooth. You know, if you go really slow, you'll see the problem the most. If you go faster, it'll be better, but even moderate drawing speed. A little bit of waviness sometimes. Not a deal breaker, and I'm being kind of picky here. And again, if you're comparing this to something like Wacom, AES, or Entrick digitizers on Surface, this thing is dreamy in comparison. Another thing to mention is this is silent. As far as I know, it doesn't have a fan inside. So for those of you who have been using noisy Cintiq Pro as well, that'll be a plus. So in the end, if you're looking to move up to something more serious. You want the big display experience. You like to draw or paint large. Maybe you're used to canvases or something like that. Uh, this one is certainly worth a look if you got 
a good chunk of money to spend. I mean, it's $900, but you don't want to go crazy with the Wacom Cintiq Pro level of pricing here. You're still getting a fairly high resolution display. There's, there's no shame in a 2K resolution display at 24 inches. The color accuracy of the display, it's not fantastic, but it is easily fixed. And if you use something like a colorimeter, one of these things, they cost about $120. You can set that up no problem, or you can try to eyeball it and match it, but it's not so different from a pretty decent display on this MSI, despite what it says Intel here, high-end display going on. So display quality, good. The pen quality on this, really good. Almost catching with Wacom at this point. I fixed some of that little bit of jittery line just on occasion, the occasional missing strokes, that sort of thing, and we're there. I'm pretty darn impressed with this. And you know, to be honest, I've reviewed a lot of the XP pens and the Huion's before. And I also have that Cintiq Pro sitting around and that's the one that I always ran back to. And with this one, I was like, well, no, I think I'm gonna finish my artwork on this one. It's working just great. So that's pretty good, given the fact that it's a lot more affordable than the tier A alternatives. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including tech for artists. And thumbs up if you like this vid.